Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday. Welcome along to Tuesday's House of Games. We've got some great quizzes with us this week. One of them, at the end of the week, is going to be winning our trophy. Who is it going to be? It'll be one of these four. Jen Brister. <laughs> Kelvin Fletcher. Dr Zoe Williams. And Ian Moore. Welcome one, welcome all. Ian, a win yesterday, a one-point win over Jen. It was close, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It was close between everyone, wasn't it? But that settles the nurse, doesn't it? It does a bit, it does. But she motivated me, Jen, when she said she only Threw here the to beat me. Threw the down, that was it. Yes, you did, actually. That may have right been... Right That may have... Well, listen, it was an error yesterday, but <laughs> the week is long. Um, Zoe? Yes. Let's take a look at the weekly leaderboards, OK? <laughs> let's get it out of the way. Yeah. Because... It doesn't look great because you see you're on one point, but mm. everyone was so close yesterday. So it feels like everyone could have a, a win in them. What tactics are you bringing into the day? Well, I'm trying to figure it out because we know that stand-up comedians are so good at this show. Mm. I'm trying to figure out why is that? I know comedians are smart people, but mm. doctors are smart people. Yeah. Actors are smart people. Mm. I mean, come Don't on, really? that's pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what gives comedians the edge? Speed of thought, I think, oftentimes. Mm. Reaction time, isn't it, and stuff like that, because you're so used to having to you know, deal with things in, in and of the moment. Kelvin, shall we take a look at the uh, the prizes for today? If you were to win today and you were pretty close to winning yesterday, you'd take home one of these. What do you fancy? There's the shower curtain that no one's ever picked. There's the uh, salt and pepper shakers, the decanter, the playing cards, and the yes, Kelvin, that is a compost bin. Decanter, I think. Yeah, don't you yes, think? Absolutely. I was going to go for the shower rail, actually. When you said that nobody's ever picked that, I thought, well, I might be the first, but... But, I mean, there's a reason they haven't there's picked a reason, Kelvin, yeah. I think. Yeah. Jen, losing by a point. Ah, losing by a still point. absolutely livid about that Winnie the Pooh. That <laughs> oh, Winnie the Pooh question. Oh, yeah. You were so good at that round as well. I believe you more. Um, <laughs> and if you were to win today, which of these would you listen, uh, take? What else? It's got to be the decanter. That yeah. is glorious. Dr Zoe? I mean, it's got to be the decanter as well. It is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Ian, do they have decanters in France? <laughs> it's a French word, isn't it? Yeah. Decanter. Oui, je crois. Decanter oui. le bois. Uh, I would take the shower curtain. No, Ooh. you wouldn't. I genuinely would take the shower curtain yeah, because in my office, because uh, a lot of the gigs are on Zoom, yeah. uh, in my office there's a studio and behind the studio is my wardrobe. So I would just put up a screen. Wow. And, and use that, yeah. A terrifying vision of the future. I hope you don't win. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. I. <laughs> I hope I give away a decanter. Great day yesterday. I'm sure we'll have another good one today. Shall we get on with it? Should we yeah. play round one? Today, round one is... <laughs> Sorry, wrong number. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. I'm going to ask you some questions. However, before you buzz in and give me your answer, I want you to do this, please. Add three. So if there is a number in the answer, please add three when you give your answer. Very best of luck. Here's your first question. Year in which the Millennium Bug would strike according to predictions. Yes, Ian. 2003. 2003? The right answer. 2000 plus 3. 2003. Next one. Distance mentioned in the title of a 1988 hit single by The Proclaimers. Yes, that is Jen. 503 miles. 503 miles. Uh, and I would walk 503 more. <laughs> There'd be 1,006 miles away from your door. Well played, Jen. <laughs> Next question. Cult BBC sci-fi series in which outlaws battle the power-mad Terran Federation. Yes, Jen. Blake's 10. Blake's 10. Well done. <laughs> Yes, I love Blake 7. It's been my favourite show. Um, for our following answers, forget adding three. I wonder if you could do this, please. Multiply by two. So any numbers in an answer, multiply by two, please. Boy band who had hits with Everybody Get Up and Slam Dunk to Funk. Yes, Zoe. Oh, gosh, here we go now. Mm -mm -mm. Ten. <laughs> the ten? <laughs> it is. Five becomes ten. Here's your next one. Multiply any number by two, please. Maximum score achievable with three darts on a standard dartboard. Yes, that is Jen. 360. Yeah, 360. Yeah, absolutely well played, Jen. 180 becomes 360. Next question. What is the title of this song? I can have a dream, baby. To 
can make that Yes, that is Jen. It takes four. It takes four? That's the right answer. Well done. It takes two. Um, it takes four. Let's forget now about uh, multiplying by two and instead add four. Okay, so add four to any number in these answers. I love Ian going, like, that's a stretch. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> two I was OK with. Come on. <laughs> We've all done maths, but come on. Spherical fortune-telling toy. Yes, Ian. Magic 12 ball. Magic 12 ball? You're absolutely right. Magic 8 ball becomes magic 12 ball. Final question in this round. 2012 film starring Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum as undercover cops in a high school. Ian. 22 again. 22 again? Correct, I'm afraid. So, Teddy, 25 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. That's 25 Jump Street. Which, if you haven't seen, is a brilliant film. And the follow-up is brilliant as well. That's the end of that round. Let's take a look at our scores, shall we? Kelvin, you're yet to get off the mark. Zoe, you have one. Ian, two. Jen Brister, early lead, four points. Well done. Very well played. Let's move straight along, shall we? Play our pairs game today, and it is... Card Oshman's Hausdisch Spiel. Uh, the player in last place, Kelvin, today that is you, gets to choose a partner. Who would you like to play with? I'll play with Zoe. Hey. Playing with Zoe. Okay, so Kelvin and Ian, if you'll swap places, please. We have team stand up here. I feel like a compare. Um, now, in this round, all the questions are in foreign languages. Okay? The good news is you get a choice of categories, and here is your choice. Yoizike, Medeo, Numeri, Geschichte, Rikmindia, or Football. <laughs> Those are your category choices, giving a clue to what they might be, also a clue to the language they might be in. Jen and Ian. Ian, I assume you're fluent in French, given you live there. I wouldn't go that far. You're going to want to do football, aren't you? No. No. I don't I... know anything about football. I was going to go Meteor, which is French for weather forecast. OK, let's do the that. French weather. So this is essentially just a question. <laughs> this could be language. really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, meteo, which is French for weather. Ian, I wonder if you could read out the question for me, because then it will sound good. <laughs> Quelle est la couleur centrale dans un arc-en-ciel? And you've got three possible answers, which are? Jaune. Jaune. Yellow. Look at that. Are you impressed? <laughs> Rouge. Red. Or vert. Green. Right. Um, what's an arc-en-ciel? It's a rainbow. It's a rainbow. So what is the central colour? Well, yeah, rainbow. red yeah. or yellow, pink? No, it's yellow, red or green. Yeah, but I'm doing the thing. You know, oh, it's see... red or yellow. Uh... Do you remember that? Is it a song, rainbow pink song? and Oh, from rainbow. Green. It, I don't think it's red or yellow. <laughs> I, don't think it's a, I think it's a choice one. <laughs> No, but I'm just trying to sing the song so I can remember where Red it is in the rainbow. Yellow and pink. You're not guys aren't like giving my logic here. Um, ah, green. I'd say I, th vert. I would say vert. I'm going to go vert? for green. Yeah. Why? Is the answer vert? Absolutely right. Well done. Green. Mm. And quite rightly, uh, you did know the question. Uh, what is the middle colour of a rainbow? Dr. Zoe and Dr. Kelvin. I wonder which uh, category you would like. Now, do you speak any foreign languages, Kelvin? I don't know, fortunately. <laughs> um, and I don't know anything about football. Numbers? New, is yeah, that Italian? Thinking, yeah, numeri. Shall we go Italian for that? Italian tends to be reasonably easy to decipher, doesn't it? When it's written down, I think. All right, then. Okay. Let's go for three. Numeri. That is Italian for numbers, as you'd worked out. And here is your question. In numeri romani, caleritara? Uh, rappresenta il numero cinquecento. Oh, OK. And your possible answers are... Emma. De. Or chi. So, in Roman numerals, which letter represents the number 500. 50? 50, OK. I think. There's a Fiat cinquecento, which is a Fiat 500. So, I'm thinking whether... It's 500, then. Yeah, is it 500? X is a 10. Not that that helps. <laughs> <laughs> just, just telling people I know. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd guess at M. Um, 
Cats I'm deep. steering towards M as yeah. well. That's my kind of instinct. It's always good to go with your instinct. Let's go with M. No. You think it's that yeah. as well? So we think it's what number represents 500 in Roman numerals, and you're saying M. Is that the correct answer? It is not, I'm afraid. Oh. Let's take a look at what the question was and what the answer is. You're absolutely right about the question, but the answer was... D. 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 Oh. Did you know you that? Yeah. yeah. M is 1,000, C is 100. D there is 500. Jen, Ian, another choice for you from this board. Now I'm leaning towards football, because at least I understand what that is, because I've got no idea what the other three are. Uh, shall we go football? Let's go football. So you're going to go for football? <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd so. I'd absolutely love it if that was, like, Icelandic <laughs> mountaineer. <laughs> uh, it is football. It's oh, Swedish no! for football. Here we go, everyone. Vilket land van vegsmeskerskapet it football for Hera 2018? I'm not going to do the number. Uh, your three possible answers. Frankrike. Russland. Kroatien. So, is that Germany... Russia, Croatia. Was Frank Ricoeur would be Germany? No. I think it's France. Frank for, uh, France? It, it's either who oh, won Frank the 2018 France. World Cup or where was the 2018 World Cup held? So it's Russia or France. What, what, is, are you saying where was the World Cup? Held, yeah. Yeah, well, you know that, don't you? Yeah. It was Russia. If, if, it's, if Riesland is Russia. Yeah, yeah it was Russia. Yeah. OK, so let's say Riesland. Yep. There's a lot depending on the word van there, isn't it? Does van mean held or won? You're saying the uh. least land? Is that the correct answer? It is Isn't incorrect. It? That's oh. unlucky. Let's take a look at what the question means. Yeah, which country won? That was really unlucky, because yeah. you knew the answer to both, both possibilities there. So which country won the 2018 Men's FIFA World Cup? And it is a Frankreich. France. Um, <laughs> Dr Zoe and Kelvin, final choice in this round. Do we know what the subjects are? are we? No. no. Not at all. <laughs> no idea. Geschichte, that is a familiar word. I've seen it before, but I can't remember what it means. Well, maybe if it's kind of in context, it might bring it back. Yeah. Shall we go for yeah, that? Go that? Yeah. So your question is on Geschichte, and it is German for history. Oh, oh OK. Gosh. Here's your question. Wer <laughs> Geschichte König Harold in the Schlacht von Hastings. Ah. And your three possible answers are Wilhelm I, uh, Heinrich de Zwitte, Edward de Treuta. So is this regarding <laughs> Battle of Hastings, 1066? <laughs> Who beat King Harold? In the Battle of Hastings. William I, Henry II or Edward III? I love the way you've absolutely smashed the German. It's just the English history. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the stumbling block. <laughs> I mean, as soon as you said the word history, no wonder I forgot what that word meant. Um, Willie Henner's... William, name. I think it was. Yeah? King, King William, the... the um... Yeah. Yeah, can I go for Wilhelm I? Yes, please. Take a look. Is that the right question? Is that the right answer? Absolutely right. Very well done. Well done, Calvin. <laughs> Who uh, defeated King Harold at the Battle of Hastings, William the Conqueror, of course. Oh, uh, William, William the First. Conqueror. Very well done. That's the end of that round, thank goodness. Uh, just Ooh. about got away with it. <laughs> Ian and Kelvin, if you'll swap back places, please. <laughs> Welcome back, Kelvin. Let's take a look at what it has done to the leaderboard. Kelvin has won, Zoe two, Ian three, Jen Brister stood out in the lead with five points. Well played, Jen. Three rounds to go on Tuesday's House of Games. Our next round is... Two clues in one. Fingers on buzzers, please, everybody. I'm going to give you a category. Our first category today is Tokyo 2020 Team GB members, OK, from the Olympics. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to see a clue to someone in that team. But it's two clues in one because as well as the clue, the answer will have the same initials as the clue. OK, here's your first clue. Top diver. Yes, Ian. Tom Daly. Tom Daly, well done. <laughs> Next Tokyo 2020 team member. Conker's dressage. Ian. Charlotte Duchamp. Charlotte Duchamp. It is not, I'm afraid. Not a million miles off. 
Anybody? Charlotte Dujardin <sighs> was the answer. Well done if you got that at home. Next one. Aquatic Prodigy. Yes, Dr Zoe. Adam Peaty. Adam Peaty. Got it. Well done, Adam Peaty, the swimmer. Your next category is Leonardo DiCaprio films. OK, don't forget, they've always got the same initials as the clue. Terrible Ways of Wicked Stockbroker. Yes, Jen. Um, uh, uh, what? Uh, no, sorry. Sorry. Ah, sorry. <laughs> oh, Ian beats Dr Zoe on the buzzer. The, the Wolf of Wall Street. The Wolf of Wall Street. Was <laughs> I, I had Wolf of Wall Street in my head and I was like, what's the tea? What's terrible? <laughs> what's the tea? The Wolf of Wall Street. Next one. 20s, glamorous gazillionaire. Yes, Dr Zoe. Oh, this is one of those where I know this. The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby. Absolutely. Well done, Dr Zoe. Next, Leonardo DiCaprio film. Con Man's Incredible Yarns Captivate. Ian. Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. That's the right answer. Next category. British pop groups. Which British pop groups are these, please? Stairs. Yes, that's Jen. Steps. Steps. Well done, that's absolutely <laughs> right. Okay. Next one. Three patrolmen. Yes, Ian. The police. The police. Well done, yep. And Your final ear. question in this round. He likes this round, Ian, doesn't he? Straightforwardly Rouge. Yes, Dr Zoe. Simply Red. Simply Red, well played. <laughs> Thank you, Dr Zoe, and that's the end of that round. Good round for Ian there. Let's uh, take a look at what that has done to the scores, shall we? Kelvin having a quieter day today. But look at this, up the top of the leaderboard, two points between the top three. Zoe wow. has five, Jen has six, Ian out on the lead now with seven points. <laughs> Yesterday's champ in the lead again, two rounds to go. Round four is going to be... Is Kazakhstan. If you could take your tablets out, please. I'm going to show you a map. Map of the United States of America there. I'm going to ask you to find a few things on the map, OK? The first thing I'd like you to find is this. The capital of Dorothy's home state in the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz. So what's the answer to that? And then where is it? It's the task you have ahead of you. One thing this show has taught me over the years is we have no idea where any of the states are in America. <laughs> There's a couple that we know, that we, like Citus, where we go, I sort of roughly know where that is. But um, very much uh, a foreign country. OK, everyone is in. What do you think at home? Jen, do you know the answer to this? No. You don't know the answer to say so you're... Oh, the, I know it's Kansas. Kansas, you're saying? But yeah. I've got Kansas? no idea where Kansas is. They, they get a lot of twisters, don't they? Mm -hmm. I think it's somewhere in the middle of the country. I think it's, okay. yeah, landlocked, so I've gone pretty central. Let's see where Jen is. Yep, pretty central there. Kelvin, uh, were you thinking it was Kansas or...? I don't know why, but I was thinking Utah. OK. And up north, so... Let's take a look at where Kelvin is. Sort of montana -y area. Dr Zoe. Yeah, Kansas, and I know it is in the middle, so I've gone even more central right in the middle. I'm hoping that's going to be the one. OK. And Ian, what are you saying? Well, I knew it was Kansas, but I had no idea where Kansas was. I like, like Jen, I thought it was landlocked, but I also, for some reason, I thought it was slightly southern. Mm. So I closed my eyes and prodded at the tablet. Okie dokie. <laughs> Lovely. OK, so one of you is in Montana. One of you is in Arkansas. One of you is in Colorado. <laughs> I'm in Colorado. One of you is in Kansas, is the news as we have it. <laughs> OK? So the question is, which one of you is in Kansas? Because whoever that is is going to win this point. What do you think at home? Which one of those is Kansas? Let's find out, shall we? Dr Zoe, Yay! well played. Absolutely right. 
That's good to remember. Kansas is the one right in the middle. Um, yeah, Kelvin, you were in Montana, Zoe, Colorado, and Ian in Arkansas. Next thing I'd like you to find is this, please. The birthplace of Motown Records. What do you think at home? Have a little point at the screen. If you know this one, I'll take a guess. If you don't... OK, I know where that is, I think. Lovely. Everyone is in. Kelvin, do you know the answer to this? It's Detroit. Mm, I think it is as well. And that's <laughs> the question we're left with yes. is where is where Detroit. Is Detroit? So I've kind of gone southerly, yeah, kind of headed towards the east coast. Gotcha. Just don't know if that's any good. OK. Dr Zoe? I... Do you think it's Detroit? I think it is, but I had no idea where Detroit was. Yeah. So I thought, if it's not Detroit, where would it be? New York, so I just went for New York. New York, OK. Yeah, absolutely, that's New York. Ian, uh, what were you thinking? Detroit, and I think, I think that's Illinois, mm. and that's bordering Canada or the lakes, so I went Canada-ish, lake-ish. OK. You are not in Illinois. I have bad news for you there. <laughs> uh, and Jen? Yeah, I had the same logic as Ian, so I know Detroit is near Canada. I am pretty sure I've gone on the wrong side of the country. I've gone west, but I think it's probably east, actually, looking at it now. So we're in Idaho, we're in Mississippi, we're in New York and we're in Michigan. We are looking for Detroit. Where is it? It's in Michigan, Ian. Oh. <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. Well done if you got that one at home. Well played. Ian, your final question is this. Can you find me? The capital of the state that was the setting for the 1980s television series Magnum P.I. Do you know this one at home? What are you going for? OK, everyone is... In Dr. Zoe, what were you thinking here? I have no idea. I never watched, I'm not familiar with that programme. So, because I put New York last time and it was wrong, I thought I'd be furious if it's right this time and I didn't put it. Do it and, in New York. you know, most people know where New York is. They so said thought, a lot of stuff in New York, don't they? They do. Absolutely so, I've gone for New right. York. So, you've gone for New York? Absolutely. Ian, what were you thinking? Well, it's Hawaii. Is it definitely Hawaii? Because that's what I was thinking. Then I thought, yeah. hold on, is that not uh, Hawaii Five O? No, it's definitely it's def Hawaii. Oh. Okay. Which is not in Illinois. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see I think where it's. You've gone I in. think it's one of those group of islands that are on the, on the bottom <laughs> left there. There you go. Um, Jen, what were you thinking? Hawaii. Yeah. It's definitely Hawaii. I used to watch it Saturday evenings. Magnum. I've gone the same as Ian, I've chosen the big, the biggest the big island. island. Yeah, absolutely. Kelvin, what were you thinking? I remember the moustache and I remember the car, Ferrari 308. I used to love the <laughs> yeah. show. Uh, I didn't know it was Hawaii, actually. I thought it was Florida, and, but I've realised that I'm probably a state up from Florida, but I was going for the okay. sunshine look. And... Yeah, just in Georgia, just at the top of Florida, though. So if it is Hawaii, we know what's going to happen. If it isn't Hawaii, then game on. What do you think at home? Hawaii for Magnum PI. Let's take a look. Is that right? And have Ian and Jen got themselves a point? They have indeed. I'll give you both a point for that in Honolulu, which you would think would be on the biggest island. How about that? But very, very well played. Lovely end to the round, Ian and Jen. Tablets away, please, everyone. We have one round to go. One round until we find our second champion of the week. And our scoreboard leading into that round looks a little bit like this. Kelvin, staying quiet. <laughs> yeah, staying quiet, staying on quiet today. <laughs> with, uh, with one Tuesdays point. are not good for me. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe, you have six. Jen, you have seven. He's got a two point lead leading into the final round. It's Monday's champion going to be Tuesday's champion, Ian Moore, with nine points. <laughs> Let's play that final round, shall we? It is. <laughs> answer smash. Bings on buzzers. Point for a correct answer. Point off. Don't forget for an incorrect answer. Here we go. Your first category is. Kitchen equipment, those will be the pictures. Which half-giant wizard was played by Robbie Coltrane in the Harry Potter films? Yes, Zoe. Hagridle. Hagridle. Lovely, well done. Hagrid and Griddle, Hagridle. Next one. Which former Faces guitarist joined the Rolling Stones in 1975? 
Yes, Ian. Ronnie Wooden Spoon. Ronnie Wooden Spoon. Ronnie Wood Wooden Spoon. Ronnie Wooden Spoon. Well done, Ian. Is he going to do it again? Next clue, next picture. In 2003, which song was the first UK top ten hit single for The Darkness? Dr Zoe. Beethoven Gloves. Beethoven Gloves. That's incorrect, I'm afraid. You're losing <laughs> so, <okay>. points. <laughs> Nobody? It's, I believe, in a thing called Love and Gloves. Uh, I think I need some Love and Gloves. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Here's your next category. Wimbledon champions. Those will be the pitchers. Charleston is the capital of which mountainous US state? Ian. Virginia Wade. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. You lose a point. You're going to kick yourself. Jen. West Virginia Wade. West Virginia Wade. It's the right answer. Ooh. Unlucky Ian. West Virginia, Virginia Wade, West Virginia Wade. Next clue, next Wimbledon champion. What is the Latin name of the prayer known in English as the Hail Mary? Jen. Ave Maria Sharapova. Ave Maria Sharapova. It's the right answer, Jen. Ave Maria and Maria Sharapova. Next Wimbledon champion, next clue. What is the name of the convenience store in the animated series The Simpsons? Ian. Quickie Martin and Avratilova. <laughs> it's the right answer, Ian. What a well, lovely hey. thing to say. <laughs> Quickie Martin and Avratilova. <laughs> Uh, are we having another category? We are not having another category. Ian won it on the last question last time. Has he just done the same thing again, I think again, he has. Jen? He lost a point, don't forget, and he gained that point. So, on Monday, Ian Moore won by one point. On Tuesday... Ian Moore wins by one point again. Ian, very well done. Wins it with the last question of the show. <laughs> Two days in a row. Takes another prize through the Channel Tunnel. Back to France, which of these would you like to take, Ian? I'm definitely going for the shower oh, curtain. Oh, I'd forgotten about the shower curtain. There we go, Ian Moore wins the House of Games shower curtain. I don't say that very often. <laughs> very well played, Ian. Unlucky again, Jen. One point this defeat once again. Let's take a look at the weekly leaderboard. Two days down, looking very good for Ian Moore. Looking good for both of our stand-ups here. Zoe and Kelvin, three points each. Jen, you have six, and Ian has eight. Two wins in a row for Ian. Will he make it three in a row tomorrow, I wonder? Can Jen make up that one extra point? Will Kelvin and will Zoe find their feet and get a victory as well? I look forward to joining all of you here, same time, same place, tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you as well, same time, same place, on the House of Games. <laughs>